All right, so I think today is the day that we're finally going to start on the controller for our CPU. And the reason that I put off using the controller and building the controller for so long is because I thought it would be better to do the add example before um, actually building the controller. Because when we get all our cables and control signals down here in this one location, everything's going to get really hectic and it's going to be really difficult to understand what line pertains to what chip and on what breadboard and so on and so forth. It's a lot easier when they're all spread out like this. And I think that was really important for the ad example because we got to see how everything individually, all these individual lines came together to add two numbers and output them, which I think was really cool. But now that we're done with that, we can move on and build the controller. So the controller, the first step of building the controller is just to get all of our control lines in this one location, in this sort of control hub location down here. And the way we're going to do this is we're just going to connect wires that go from wherever the control lines go from up to here. And ideally, you want to be able to control every single signal from this location in the same way, though. And that's important because we want to be able to control them all as active lows or as active highs. Now, most of these signals are active lows, but I think ideally it would make more sense to use active highs because if we have LEDs or something, then the LED would turn on if the signal was high. So then I'm going to put some NOT gates in front of every single one of these active low signals. Now the first way that this is going to work is going to, we're going to have our switch come from 5 volts and then it's just going to go into our IC like normal, right? Now this is also at the same time going to go through an LED and out to ground. Okay. Now this just tells us that when we close the switch, the LED turns on so that we know that we're actually controlling the signal right now. Now this is for an active high signal, right? So this is for an active high. So if it's an active low signal, what we need to do is say, when there's five volts here and this LED turns on, we actually want a zero here. And we're gonna do that by placing a NOT gate right here in between the switch and the IC. So the way this circuit is going to work is over here, we're gonna have five volts. So we can have five volts go through the switch and the LED is going to act in exactly the same way, right? So this part of the circuit's the same, only this part's different because we're going to have it go through a NOT gate and then go to the IC. And this is going to be for an active low IC signal. Now this is good because all we have to worry about is whether we want this signal to be on or not, which is by closing the switch or opening the switch and in exactly the same way, no matter whether the IC is active high or active low. And by you know, predetermining whether these ICs are active high or active lows, we can place the NOT gate before and then just have everything work exactly the same, which is going to be perfect. So no matter what, if the LED is on, that means that the IC is in its active state. In either of these examples, you see how that works. Now, it could be an active low IC, it could be an active high IC, but as long as the LED is on, then that means the IC is in its active state. So all we have to go through is go through all the data sheets and figure out which of these ICs are active highs and which are active lows. And then when we transport all these signals up to the control hub, all we have to do is place a NOT gate before the ones that are active lows. And if they're not active lows, then we just go straight in like normal. Now, one IC we have to watch out for is this little guy, the uh, 74LS241N. Now, this is a tri-state buffer. What makes this more difficult to deal with than the other ones is not the fact that it's a tri-state buffer. It's the weird layout and the weird circuit design of this chip. So the way that they've done this circuit is the top portion is kind of like a 4-bit tri-state buffer, and the bottom portion is like another 4-bit tri-state buffer. And they each have their own control signals, right? So the one control signal controls the top four bits, and one control signal controls the last four bits. And one of these is an active low. So let's just, let's just say this is an active low. Okay, and let's say this one is the active high. Now I need to be able to control all eight bits with just one control line here. So this whole, you know, controlling each four bits individually system is not going to work. So what I want to do is create a way that I can control both of them at the same time. Now to do this is actually very simple. We just have to choose which one of these we're actually going to invert. And we're going to just invert this one signal. So let's go over the circuit um, on how we're going to do that right now. Now, I already designed exactly what we do for just controlling one signal with one switch over here. But controlling two signals where each of them is just an opposite of the other with one control signal is in fact very easy. All we have to do is combine these two circuits together. So all we have to do, we just have our five volt signal to our switch, go down to our LED. So this part's just like normal. And then we have it go up the straight signal 
to the active high portion of the IC. And then we have this signal go through a NOT gate, and this will just go to the active low portion of the IC. Now the great thing about this circuit is that with one line, we can control two lines, where each one is the opposite of each other. So that means if this LED is on, then the IC is active for both portions. So because we have, if the LED is on, that means we have a one here and a zero here, which means both of these signals will be active in the IC. And if the LED is off, then the opposite will occur, where the IC is completely off, meaning this will be a zero and this will be a one. So the entire chip will be disabled, which is exactly what we want from this circuit. Now, I don't use this IC too much, which means that the need for this circuit only comes up like two or three times, but in case you use the same ICs as me, then you're gonna need this circuit. All right, so I have all of our lines down here and I've attached the LED for every single one of them. Now, the thing is, I obviously don't have any of these wires, so all we have to do is transport these wires, which already have the labels, down to their correct locations. And while I was doing this, while I was you know plugging in everything down here, I made a little uh, sheet that says which one. So the first um, LED here controls the output load. So this means the output registers load signal. Um, and this second one, the second LED controls the input, um, the instruction register, sorry, output enable. So we can just go ahead and take the wires then that were previously there and just move them up into these locations. And then after register B load, we have the program counter. Okay, so the program counter, let me move over this so we can see. I added, I connected the program counter up to the bus. Okay. So you guys can see the program counter right here. So I added a 74LS245, which is a tri-state buffer, um, up to this program counter. So this will just um, buffer the values that are in the program counter out onto the bus. And this, of course, has its own output enable line, which will go down into the control hub area. Now, because we've designated the most significant four bits to hold the instruction, meaning that that's the actual control word that will end up going to this control hub to the Amtel chips that are going to end up controlling all of these control lines. Um, that means that we've designated the last four, the, um, the four least significant bits, as the address bits, which means that the MAR, now you guys might, may remember that the MAR, it gets its signal from the bus, it gets its input from the bus from the last four bit lanes here. And the instruction register, instruction register over here puts now the instruction register the first four bits are going to be the um, instruction meaning the control word and the last four bits are going to be the address and you can see that we have connected the last four bits up to the least four significant bits on this bus line meaning that everything that has to do with the memory address is on the least significant four bit lines and everything that has to do with the control word is on the most significant four bit lines for the bus so I just added this right here because I realized that I had forgotten to do so um, before in the video series. So just make sure that you have this because the program counter is ultimately going to be primarily where the um, address for the RAM comes from. So it's important that you have that hooked up. Now the other location that the memory address is going to come from is obviously from the instruction register. So it's just going to, we're going to transport that memory address through the bus. Now back to this is the last one, the program counter. And that goes right here. So now technically, if we power it up, we should see that each of these LEDs turns on and the corresponding function should work as well. Now I'm not gonna test all the functions right now, but I am going to test whether the LED turns on, which seems like a pretty basic test, but we're gonna do it anyways. So, all right, good. So that means all these lines are connected up to the right LED. So the real test is whether these LEDs are connected up to the correct function. Um, which is something that we'll test in a later video because I fear that this video, video is already getting a bit too long. So um, please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Kiel Mohadeen and I'll catch you guys later.